Hi everybody, Mr. Machado here with another video for you to keep learning from home. Today we are going to be talking about grammar. You already know what grammar is. Grammar is a set of rules that I need to know in order to use a language. We are all learning English in school, so that's why we are all learning all the English grammar rules that we need to know in order to read, write, and use English as a language. So let's review a little bit of what we learned so far. First, we learned that for me to have a complete sentence, I need two pieces of information. I need to know who is the sentence about, and I need to know what's going on. I also learned that every single one of the different parts of a sentence have specific names. The who is called subject, the subject of a sentence. And what is happening is called the predicate, the predicate of a sentence. We also learned that if I'm missing one of those two pieces of information, I do not have a complete sentence. I only have a tiny little piece of a sentence, which is called a fragment. We also talked a little bit about the different parts of speech. We learned that every single word we see in English has a job. And there's a lot of different jobs. There are nine different jobs. So all the words that we know, they fall into a different category. They have different names. So we learned three different parts of speech so far. We learned that the subject of a sentence can either be a noun, which is a word that refers to a person, a place, or a thing, or a pronoun, which is a word that takes place of a noun. And we also learned that the predicate usually starts with a verb. And a verb is a type of word that describes an action. It's an action word. So before we start talking about today's topic, which is simple sentences and compound sentences, we have to learn one more part of speech. And the part of speech that we are going to talk about today is called conjunctions. Conjunctions are words that connect other words, phrases, or clauses in a sentence. So I like to think of conjunctions as connectors. They are the words that put other words together, almost like a little glue for sentences. There are a lot of different conjunctions, a lot of different types of words that I can use to connect other words or to connect sentences, but we are going to focus on the most common ones, the ones that we see all the time. And an easy way for me to remember all of them is for me to think about the word fanboys. So if I can memorize the fanboys, I can memorize the most common coordinating conjunctions that I see, which are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Those are the most common coordinating conjunctions. Those are the most common words that I use to combine other words together, phrases, and or clauses as well. So let's take a look at the fanboy conjunctions and let's understand a little bit of their meaning, also looking at an example. The conjunction for. The meaning of that conjunction is because. For example, I have to find a new job for I am unemployed, because I am unemployed. The conjunction and. The meaning of that conjunction is addition, to add, to put things together. I am a husband and a father. The conjunction nor. The meaning of that conjunction is and not. So disagreement. For example, neither my parents nor my friends supported me. The conjunction but. The meaning of that conjunction is however, it's opposition. For example, I have got a home but I haven't got a car, but I do not have a car. The conjunction or, the meaning is either. For example, which color do you like, red or blue? It's giving you a choice. The conjunction yet, the meaning is but. For example, Tom plays basketball well, yet his favorite sport is football. He plays basketball very well, but basketball is not his favorite sport. Football is his favorite sport. And last, the conjunction so. The conjunction so means therefore. She was sick, so she couldn't attend the meeting. Therefore, she couldn't attend the meeting. So those are the most common conjunctions 
you are going to find. So if you can remember the word fanboys, you are probably going to be able to remember all of them as well. But okay, I learned that conjunctions are words that put other words or sentences together. How can I do that? How can I put two different sentences together? That's the topic of today's video. We are going to talk about simple sentences and compound sentences. So first, I want you to think about a compound word. What is a compound word? A compound word, it's when I have two separate words and I put them together to come up with a new word. For example, the word play, it means something, and the word ground means something different. When I put the two words together, I have the word play ground, which is a completely different word, and that's a compound word. I can use that same idea when it comes to sentences as well. I can have simple sentences and I can combine two different simple sentences to make a compound sentence. But how can I put two different sentences together? I already learned, you already know. We just talked about conjunctions. Conjunctions are the words, they are the glue that can put two sentences together. We are going to take a look at an example and we are going to see how can I use conjunctions to combine two different sentences? And there is a little formula that I have to use. So let's take a look at my first example. I have two sentences. The first sentence is, I like yellow birds. I have a subject, I, and I have a predicate, like yellow birds. That's a simple sentence. Let's take a look at this next sentence. My mom likes blue birds. I have a subject, who? my mom. And what's happening with my mom? What is the predicate? Likes blue birds. So I have another simple sentence. So if I want to combine those two sentences together, I have to use my formula. I start with my first sentence. I have to add a comma. Then I add one of the conjunctions that I learned, one of the fanboys. And last, I finish with the last simple sentence. So my, both my sentences are talking about birds. So I'm going to think about which conjunction I'm going to use. Well, they're both kind of talking about the same thing. They're both agreeing with each other. So I'm going to use the conjunction and. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to write the first sentence, add a comma, add the conjunction and, and write the second sentence. So this is my compound sentence. I like yellow birds and my mom likes blue birds. So that is one sentence, but it's not a simple sentence anymore. Now it's a compound sentence because I have two different ideas, two different clauses, two different thoughts together. Let's take a look at another example. My first sentence says, birds can fly in the sky. My second sentence says, fish can breathe underwater. Both sentences have their own subjects and predicates. They're completely independent sentences. They're separate. Now I want to combine them. But if I really think about my sentences, they're not really talking about the same thing. The first one talks about birds flying in the sky and the second one talks about fish breathing underwater. That's kind of like the opposite. So I have to think about which conjunction am I going to use. And I think for this one, the best conjunction is going to be but, because it's the opposite. Those sentences have kind of like opposite ideas. They are not really agreeing with each other. So I'm going to write my first sentence. I'm going to add the comma. I'm going to add my coordinating conjunction, the one that I chose, and I'm going to add the second sentence. So here is how my final compound sentence is going to look like. Birds can fly in the sky, but, fish can breathe underwater. So that's one compound sentence. I do have two different thoughts, two different ideas, but they are combined together. They're joined together by a coordinating conjunction. So just as a review, a simple sentence contains a subject and a predicate, and it expresses a complete thought. For example, the boys went to the park. A simple sentence is also called an independent clause. It's independent. It doesn't depend on anyone else. It's by itself. It has the whole thought, the whole idea. So it doesn't really need anything else. A compound sentence 
contains two or more independent clauses. So just like we did, we combined two separate sentences, two independent sentences. And the clauses or the sentences are joined by a coordinating conjunction. For example, the boys went to the park, but they did not go to the zoo. So if you pay attention, we have two separate sentences there. We have two subjects and we have two predicates, but they are joined, they are combined together by the conjunction but. Okay, so now that we just learned a new part of speech, we learned about coordinating conjunctions, and we also learned how to use those conjunctions to put sentences together and make compound sentences, it's time for us to practice. Here is your exit ticket for today. Your job is to turn simple sentences into compound sentences. And you know that in order to do that, you have to add a comma and a conjunction. But for this examples here, for this exit ticket, you are only going to have two options of conjunctions to choose from. You are going to use the word and or but. Those are the two conjunctions you can choose. So let's take a look at the exit ticket here. A sentence that contains two related sentences joined by and or but, it's called a compound sentence. We already know that. So write a compound sentence by joining each pair of sentences use a comma and the word and or but. So you have to choose which one of the conjunction works best with those sentences. So let's take a look at the first example. Hamsters are fun. That's one sentence. The second sentence says, goldfish are easier to care for. So now you have to combine those sentences. You are going to add a comma and you are going to choose which one of those words, which one of those conjunctions would go better there. Hamsters are fun and goldfish are easier to care for. Or am I going to use the conjunction but? Hamsters are fun, but goldfish are easier to care for. You have to think about what are those sentences saying, okay? So you are going to do those five different examples and all you have to do is to combine those sentences. So that's it for today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed learning about a new part of speech, the coordinating conjunctions, and I hope you really understood how to add simple sentences and make compound sentences. I'll see you guys next time with another video for you to keep learning from home. Take care.